What inspired you to write the book Winner's Dream? Well, a couple things, you know. I, I, the most important thing is I, I went to lots of universities all over the world and I spoke with young people who really inspire me. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 1900 university alliances around the world and I would see these young people with unbelievable educations, pedigrees, passion, you know, believing in a purpose, wanting to be somebody in the world. And I realized that all I could offer them was stories in the way I lived it. Yes. Not theory, not formulas, but stories. Yes. And every time I went someplace, people would want one more story. Well, they'd say, you should write a book, which really humbled me. What I was very passionate about in the composition of the book is to underscore who I am, which is a person that is humble and a person that remains ever hungry. And most importantly, I didn't want the pages to be filled just with my story. I wanted the reader to see their story in my story. Yes. And that humility and that hunger that you demonstrate, and we have heard from many people that you demonstrate, where did that come from? Well, I tell you, you know, it really came early to me. Um, you know, everybody needs a hero. And I dedicated the book to my mom and said everything I was, am, or ever will be, I owe to her. And everybody needs somebody that unconditionally believes in you and has the belief in you that says there's no ceiling on what you can do. Yes. And that's the relationship that we had. So I always felt that there wasn't a ceiling. And I think that's just a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for a person in their life. And that turned into work. You know, early on, I realized that work was the way to climb yes. and be somebody in the world. And I think that work is extraordinarily noble, especially for a young person. Yes. It gives you self-confidence. You make a lot of mistakes, but you learn from them all. And what you become, you know, as the years go by and the experiences go by, is you become the sum total of all those experiences, all those jobs, mm -hmm. good, bad, and indifferent. You learn a lot. Mm -hmm. When speaking with successful people, there's often one specific event in their life, in their early life, that was a real core driver behind what motivates them in, today, in today's world. Is there a specific moment in your life that you can think that you can speak to that was the, the driving force behind you and who you are? Yeah, I think the delicatessen. You know, at the time, I, um, you know, I had been through the paper routes and bus and tables and picking up garbage for the town and pushing up shopping carts for finest. But to trade it all in and have an opportunity to be an entrepreneur, to buy a business for 5,500 notes, 7,000 with interest, you pay it off or you're gone, really gave me an understanding of what it takes to um, take a shot yes. and use all the assets and resources in your mind that you can put together to make it a success. Um, most importantly, it changed my life in the sense that the sum total of the experiences that led up to that experience really led me to one consistent theme that still drives me today, which is the customer and the customer alone is the North Star. Yes. Who are your mentors today? Everybody has taught me something. From the person that gave me my first break in the supermarket when I was 15, yes to the guy who sold me the deli and took my word for the notes, mm -hmm. to my first hiring manager at Xerox, Emerson Fullwood, when I overlooked Central Park on a day that I was fighting for my life, not a job. These are all memories that are so endearing to me, and they've all made a difference. I also think about Barry Rand. I think, you know, young people growing up in a company, I was selling for a living. I saw the president at that time of U.S. operations for Xerox, and I'm like, you know what, I want to be like that guy. And I think that's what role model leadership is all about. The leadership that we have, the chance that we have to make a difference on other people's lives is really awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what drives me. I think that, you know, leadership is the art of developing followership. Yes. And if you feel like you're going through the day and you're setting an example that matters to other people, then you matter. Bill, tell us what mistakes you, not that you have made, but you observe others make in their careers. Sometimes you have to make career choices that aren't for you. I'll never forget the time I went to uh, Puerto Rico with Xerox, and they were ranked 64 out of 64. I was newly married, new baby boy living in New York. 
I had everything all set for myself in New York, and the company asked me to go run Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Now, I thought that was a really nice compliment, but then when I looked at them in the stack rankings, they were 64 out of 64, and I'm like, well, is this a half-hearted compliment? Yeah, yeah. But the decision was real simple. No, I don't speak Spanish. No, it's not a convenient time. But people that get a reputation for taking the perfect choice at the perfect time for their interests, mm -hmm. that's one kind of person. Yes. Then there's the kind of person that basically says, I have an opportunity, and I could do this in service to my company, and at the same time, better myself and learn something. Those people also get a reputation. So I tell people, when you have an opportunity, go for it. And I tell leaders, if you have a young person with potential, push them too early. Make this happen. Go for it. And I also say to people, don't sabotage your own career. Sometimes you've done a great job, you're climbing the ladder, you're doing fantastic, and then you get some sidebar offer and you go for the money. The glitter of the gold has broken more hearts than I can count. You really have to stay true to your own vision and your own purpose and who you really want to be and the difference you really want to make in the world. Do you think that uh, given the choices that people have, the fact that Instagram gets bought for this and another company gets bought for this, that people joining an organization for the long term is, is a yesterday behavior? Absolutely not. I think the, um, this generation, this young generation, is even smarter. Um, I was pretty impatient when I was young, too, and in some ways still am. I don't think impatience is bad at all. I also think that this generation has something that mine certainly didn't have, which is this unwavering commitment to, to purpose. Mm -hmm. And they want to do things that they truly believe will change the world. Mm -hmm. When we enabled our vision to make the world run better and improve people's lives as our enduring cause, that got a lot of people's attention, yeah. particularly the young people. So I say this is a great generation. It is our ability to educate this generation on the two types of lives that you can have. Sure, if you're a great inventor and you can make something that didn't exist before and it's worth multiple billions, you should do it. Yes. But for the majority of the people, they're inspired because they want to get to work. They want to get on, on track with a job. The job really does bring tremendous self-respect and self-confidence to people. They're just looking for a way to get started. And then you got to really help them line up their goals. You know, this idea of who you want to be and what you want to do to make a difference in the world is not an easy question for everybody to answer. Sometimes if you've lived it and you've experienced it, if you take a little bit of time out for other people, give that discretionary effort, especially to a young person with a lot of potential, you can make a big difference in their life. I also believe that we have a unique opportunity to make a difference with the younger generation and inspire people all over the world to see the power of a brand like SAP and the fact that you know, not only are we changing the world with our technology, but I think this idea of networking industries and value chains all over the world can be so powerful because you know we have 68,800 people that work at SAP but there's 2.1 million people that support SAP's brand in the ecosystem. I'd very much like to see that go to 5 million people between now and 2020 at a minimum and if you think about that how many people can you touch, how many jobs can you create, how much GDP and how much economic value can you add? That would be an immense accomplishment. Yes.